Welcome to the Men's Divorce Podcast, presented by the domestic litigation firm Cordell & Cordell, a partner men can count on. Now, here's your host, managing partner and CEO of Cordell & Cordell, Scott Trout. Well, welcome to this edition of the podcast uh, today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, something special, obviously, that's more appropriate in uh, what's going on in today's world, and that is uh, the effects of the coronavirus or COVID-19. Uh, the last podcast, we talked a little bit about how uh, COVID-19 is affecting divorce and guys going through divorce, guys thinking about divorce. So today, we thought we'd just spend a few moments. Uh, guys out there have a lot of questions about its impact on child support and alimony uh, because times are changing. So today I have joining me again uh, with wonderful information on child support, uh, Will Hallis from the St. Louis office, one of our senior litigators. Welcome, Will. Thank you. So keep in mind, guys, um, you know, this is not legal advice, uh, uh, albeit uh, Will and I are licensed in Missouri. I'm licensed in Illinois and Georgia. You know, we have guys listening from all around the country. um, And so make sure that this is intended to be informative, educational. It's also intended for you to get these are talking points, action items for you to go seek the advice of an attorney to truly strategize about the certain uh, facts about your case. Uh, so just with that caveat, I want to make sure that uh, we all take this for what it is. And, and we I think it's wonderful, useful information, just like the seminars we give around the country as well. And so, as you know, uh, with Cordell and Cordell, as you guys are fans of this podcast and following us, we're now in our 30th year of uh, representing guys in before, during, and after divorce. And so we just thought, what a better opportunity than to talk about something that is so appropriate um, and these areas of impact because, you know, Will, with, with COVID, I, we were just talking off air that we have no idea what tomorrow brings. And... It's something that most of us uh, in my age and lower, if I'm 52, have never experienced anything like it. And, you know, you can go to look at 9-11, the recession. Yes, similarities, but nothing like this. And so I had written down, Will, some really guys are there are four areas of impact that I see. And I'm sure there are more. But the pressing questions for guys out there. That is, okay, I'm not getting any custody or I'm getting less custody. How does that affect child support and alimony or maintenance? Uh, I have a decrease in my salary uh, or I'm no longer have overtime and I've been told I'm not going to get my bonus. Um, Then the last or the third one would be I lost my job. And then the last one is that I've been in a furlough situation where, um, you know, I can collect unemployment maybe. Uh, I've got some benefits still out there with my health insurance, but I'm not getting my regular pay. And so of those, I think the first place to start is the furlough, uh, because that is a pretty common scenario that I'm hearing around the country, that these companies, albeit they don't want to downsize or right-size the workforce, they are trying to protect their ability and their cash flow and their lines of credit, and they're furloughing their employees. So, you know, guys are emailing questions all the time hey, I, I'm kind of on a temporary furlough. Um, I'm in a shelter-in-place situation. Um, I can't work from home. I don't have an income right now. And so I don't think I can pay my child support or my alimony. What do I do? And that's really kind of uh, you know softball open-ended question for you. What do they do? So with child support, I mean, until there's an, an actual – substantial and continuing change in circumstance. That's the standard in Missouri, and I think it's a standard for most states uh, across the country. Until there's a sub- both substantial and continuing change in circumstances, the court isn't necessarily going to modify your support number. So if you have the ability to uh, go after unemployment, I know they've loosened a lot of restrictions in a lot of the states, um, certainly pursue that because anything that you can pay towards child support is going to uh, be to your benefit. Something is always better than nothing. Mm-hmm. So if you can if you can pay something, let's say your child support uh, order says you're supposed to pay $500 a month. If you can pay $100 a month, do it. Mm-hmm. Do do whatever you can because you know, and this goes to some of the other questions too. A lot of times there are there is statutory interest that's mm-hmm. going to be attached to an arrearage that's going to start to accrue. The child support number doesn't stop just because you're furloughed 
or you've lost your job or any other reason. Mm -hmm. It just keeps going. And so if an arrearage starts to accrue, then the court really has no uh, ability to say, well, I'm not going to uh, apply the interest. It's statutory. It's Mm -hmm. required. At least here in Missouri, it is. So something is always better than nothing because that interest is just going to compound your problem if you're not paying anything. Mm -hmm. So a guy will, I'm, I'm a guy that's been furloughed. I called my ex-wife and she said, don't worry, Scott, you don't have to pay. I, I got you covered. Am I good? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you Certainly having it in writing will help, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not a silver bullet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you would need to get essentially an affidavit mm-hmm. saying that this person has received or has waived this uh, child support for this month or for the next month or for whatever period of time is mm-hmm. relevant. Um, you need an official document, uh, an affidavit notarized and submitted to the court or to your child support collection agency in order for you to actually get credit for that mm-hmm. month's payment. So she could just simply say in an affidavit, uh, you know, this notifies a receipt of a full amount of child support, even though she didn't get it. Right. Or she could say, you know, I've waived it. But something notarized filed and continuing you know, each month and that it's due, right? Right. I mean, if you don't have that mm-hmm. um, and you just have this sort of handshake agreement yeah. or even just an email that says, yeah, I agree, um, mm-hmm. she can always go back on that. She can yeah. always say, well, that was faked or that, you know, this, that or the other. So something that is signed, notarized, and then you'll want to submit it either to the court or to your child support collection agency uh, to make sure that you're getting that, that credit. So guys that are furloughed, um, now they're trying to figure out how they pay their own bills. Is there any guidance? What should they pay? I mean, you know, and it's always the hard question is, what's going to be enough to keep me out of jail if the she files a contempt action? Which, depending upon your relationship, you know, what, what, is, what do you tell guys? What do they do? So I guess there's two things there. Um, one, you definitely need to prioritize your bills, mm-hmm. right? Uh, depending on your state's statute, our state uh, statutory interest is 1% per month, 12%, mm-hmm. right? So if you've got a credit card out there that has maybe 5 6 7% interest on it, it's probably better for you to pay your child support than to make that credit card payment for that month, depending on what those numbers shake out to be. Mm-hmm. But sort of to what you touched on with a contempt, um, that's going to be a different standard, right? That's going to the burden of proof for a contempt is showing that you're willfully and contumaciously refusing to abide by the court order when you have the ability to comply. Right. And so you've got some additional arguments there of, look, I don't have the ability to comply. And you can't just generically say, well, COVID nineteen, judge, right? right? Um, but if you can show, if you can show your records, these are the expenses that I have to pay: my electric, my gas, my utilities, all you know, my mortgage all of those sort of things, and then say, look, judge, I just couldn't pay the full amount this month. I'm doing the best I can. Mm-hmm. And that's where you you get, gain that sort of respect of the court that you're doing the best you can. So that that's how you try and prioritize, you know, what makes the most sense for you to pay at this time. Right. And I, I've always told guys stretch, you know, stretch what you think you should pay, do a little bit more. I mean, you want to, you always want to be in a position of where you went to the judge and said, look, here's the bill I chose not to pay to make sure that I sent support. Do you think? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Guy is now working our way backwards. Um, and to me, this is the game changer. I lost my job. Um a different situation com- completely from a furlough. Should I do something right now? What is it? You know, I've heard, hey, courts are closed. Um, do I have a remedy? Should I take action? So courts are closed to the extent, and it depends, again, on your jurisdiction. But, uh, for example, here in Missouri, the courts are closed to in-person uh, status conferences, hearings, except for certain emergency circumstances. But they're not close to filing. You can still file any case that's appropriate right now. Uh, It's mostly electronic filing anyway. So all of that can be done without risk of exposure. Mm -hmm. You can only go retroactive on a motion to modify back to the date of service to the other party. And so in order to get the other party served, you first of all have to get on file and get the summons from the court. So getting on file sooner than later is going to be in your interest. Mm -hmm. Now, you still have that same burden of proof, a substantial and continuing change in circumstances. So with loss of job, obviously, you've hit that substantial. You've gone from whatever your income was Mm -hmm. to no income. Uh, The question is, will you meet that continuing 
And we just don't know that right now, right? right? We don't know how long this is going to impact everyone. Um, you know, as we said before, nobody's really hiring right now, mm-hmm. except for maybe grocery stores. Right. So there's that uh, concern about this is going to be a continuing change in circumstances and whatever future job I get might not be to the same pay scale that I'm at right now. So getting on file, being ready for that uh, or having that retroactive remedy available to you to change uh, looking backwards is going to be to your benefit. Um, So the key really, though, is to file. I mean, it kind of is the line of demarcation saying, okay, judge, hey, I, I want retroactive child support, meaning that I want you to reduce the order down to whatever the new amount is, if it's anything, right, to the date it was served. Right. Right. So, I mean, that's the key is where we talk about some guys think, oh, well, just wait it out and see what happens. You're losing all these months because that, that money continues to accrue and you're not giving your I – mean, depending upon your jurisdiction, obviously, every state has a different rule as to judge discretion or automatic – some statutes say shall, some states say may be retroactive. So, you know, we talk to guys all the time and saying, look, you, you really – it's in your interest just to get filed. And right. then we'll reevaluate. I mean, courts are closed to some extent, meaning that the progression of your case is going to go much slower than normal. Right. So you have more time. So let's say uh, okay, we tell guys, let's file. File the motion to modify. Should they be looking for employment? Should What should they be doing to protect their case to put the best evidence on when they get to that point? What should they be doing? So as far as looking – uh, looking for employment, absolutely. Uh, that's going to be one of the things that the court is going to look for. Are you making your best effort to become employed to the best of your abilities? If you are just kind of you know sitting at home and not really looking for a job, well, then the court's not going to look favorably on, on that. They're going to say you haven't met that burden because you haven't shown that you're making your best efforts. Um, it's just like when we impute uh, people with income who say, well, I can't work. Well, you can find a minimum wage job. Mm-hmm. Now, right now, maybe that's not possible. Right. Um, but you show those uh, those applications. You show your uh, efforts to try and collect unemployment. Mm-hmm. Um, any benefits that you can avail yourself of, now is not the time to you know be proud and, and not want to take a handout. Um, if you're in that situation where you've got to pay child support in addition to your bills and everything mm-hmm. else, um, you have to look for every resource that's available yeah. to you. I mean, I think what the advice I always tell guys, and I know you do too, and that is, again, appearance and presentation. How do you be, appear before the judge and doing everything you can to meet your obligation, meaning, as you suggest, don't be proud, take handouts, find different jobs, find – if you can find an hourly job, you know, whatever it is, to try to bridge the gap. You may never be able to replace that income that you are making, but at least you'll provide some source of revenue coming in that helps you pay something. You know, we just talked, you know, about when you're furloughed – Pay something, right. uh, not nothing. Because, I mean, even when you have no job, it, the problem is guys can't pay their own bills, and so they have to prioritize what comes first. And I assume, you know, naturally we always talk about child support, but alimony is in the same vein, right? It's really the same factor, substantial and continuing change in Missouri. Um, lose your job, got to prove unless there's the, – the court says it's fixed and – it depends. I mean, I, obviously, you want a, a lawyer to look at your order to make sure it's modifiable. Right. Child support's always modifiable in Missouri. Um, the, the alimony may not be. It just depends on what it says. So. Right. So um, let's go then moving on to decrease in pay. Let's say, okay, my pay's been cut. I just read an article today um, that uh, – I can't remember the company, but they cut everyone's salaries by 40 percent, still working the same amount, but they've cut them by 40 percent. And they get no overtime, no bonus. You know, same situation. What do I do? You know, can I file? Should I file? Or what? Is, what? Should, what are you telling guys? So at that point, uh, first thing that you should do is go talk to an attorney mm-hmm. in your state and see what sort of change that's going to uh, have on what your potential child support number is. If the change in your income really doesn't change that child support calculation all that much, mm-hmm. you may not meet that burden that you need to get in there to, to modify. But if it does, then yeah, you want to get in there and get on file for those same reasons we just talked about. Retroactivity, uh, preserving the ability to go back in time and say, Judge, I know you didn't make a ruling on this until 2021, mm-hmm. but my income dropped back in 2020. So 
I need some help because an arrearage will accrue. Yeah. Even if you're making your best efforts uh, with that limited income and prioritizing what expenses you have to pay, you're not going to meet that full amount. And so that'll help you both avoid a, a higher arrearage number. Maybe mm-hmm. it'll just reduce the arrearage, but at least it'll be something. Yeah. And then that's compounded again by the statutory interest and all of those things that go along with uh, being unable to meet that child support obligation. So we keep talking about one thing that just came to mind. We're kind of assuming, hey, this is post-divorce. What about a guy in the middle of divorce? He's got a temporary order. Um what we in Missouri, we call a PDL, pendite elite, pending the outcome. You may have a temporary order to pay child support and alimony. Should we file a motion? What What do you do? And what would you recommend, at least in Missouri, obviously, but every guy that's out there? Uh, is that order unchangeable, you know, historically, predominantly? What would you suggest? So when you have a, a pending case and you've got those temporary orders in place, um, from my experience, at least, the court can always look back and say, we're going to change that retroactively. We're going to look back to that temporary order and say, well, that temporary order wasn't quite right. Um, There were things that changed during the course of the case. And if an arrearage has accrued, then as part of the final judgment, that arrearage can be reduced or eliminated, depending on where, where things eventually work themselves out to be. So it may not be as important to get a, say, a motion to uh, modify that temporary order on mm-hmm. file to get retroactive, but it sort of depends on your case, your jurisdiction, and how the temporary order was phrased. Uh, sometimes I've had certain judges tell me, well, if it doesn't say subject to reallocation or subject mm-hmm. to um, argument about retroactive change, then if it was done by consent, there's no going back. You're stuck with that number. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, that's where knowing your judge yeah. is really helpful. You know, looking back in the recession, I mean, my experience was judges were very receptive to understanding the economic times, guys losing their job and not being able to find replaceable income. Uh, these are guys that are, you know, older, you know, middle-aged, and they're, they're, they're never making. They're half of what they're making. So I would anticipate, I can't imagine, a lot of the judges on the bench or even the bar and the attorneys have been here and experienced both the recession, albeit different, somewhat similar situation with with the economic times. I mean, I foresee, and I imagine you do too, judges being at least receptive to understanding loss of job, loss of income, cut in wage, cut in pay, cut in bonus, don't you think? Yeah, that's where judicial discretion and sort of what I describe as the gray area of family mm-hmm. law comes into play. Yeah. Uh, it's a court of equity, right? And so it, at its base, it's dealing with fairness. Mm-hmm. And so I have found that judges tend to be receptive to those arguments of, well, look, something changed. We, we were, made this initial order based on a certain set of facts, and those facts changed pretty significantly. So we need to look back and we need to make those changes that are appropriate. So the last topic, real easy to deal with, I've I've got no custody. My spouse, I'm in the middle of the divorce, or my ex has just decided to give me no custody, no contact, either overreacting to COVID, going into self-quarantine. You know, should I be paying? Should I continue to pay? Can I stop paying? What do I do? So you can't really just stop paying. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the... They are not tied together. Uh, and I've had judges tell me that goes both ways. If the other side isn't paying child support, that yeah. doesn't mean they don't get to see their child. If you're not getting to see your child, that doesn't mean you get to just stop paying child support. Um, there are some some statutes, some case law that um, will deal with that and mm-hmm. say, you know, if somebody's uh, withholding custody, maybe the court will you know, reduce the child support or abate the child support for a period of time. That's possible. But when you do self-help on that sort of thing, again, you're not putting your mm-hmm. best foot forward with the judge. You can you have that argument in your back pocket, potentially, depending on, on your jurisdiction. Right. But um, to, to go out and do that on your own is something that the court typically is not going to look yeah. favorably upon. So like a family access, some, some emergency motion. Again, the point being is for guys, don't sit around, even though the courts say they're closed, even though the government says they're closed, there are still things you can do. And that is go talk to your lawyer. There are, I assume there are um, 
mechanisms and remedies in place that at least can put them in a better position. Right. In Missouri, we have the family access motion mm-hmm. that you know deals specifically with custody. If your state doesn't have that, there's probably a motion for contempt or some yeah. other motion that would address uh, the other party failing to follow the court yeah. order. I mean, that's by definition contempt. Mm-hmm. And so if they don't have a good excuse, mm-hmm. uh, then the court should appropriately react to their failure to follow the court right. order. And, you know, even though courts are closed, your lawyer's still working. Right. They're still working files, right? right? So they should call their lawyer and get something done. Right. Absolutely. And that, I mean, they're going to be able to tell you the intricacies of your state statute, your judges, how they view this, what's going on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're in communication with the judges, with their clerks, um, and, you know, figuring out when's the first time we're going to be able to get into court. Are we going to have a phone conference available? Mm -hmm. I had a trial just the other day by video conference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are things that we can do um, if the court is open to them in order to get issues in front of the judge as soon as possible. Good. Well, awesome. Great stuff. Appreciate your time today. My pleasure. Thank you. So if you're a guy out there and you have a bunch of questions, we encourage you to – Seek out a lawyer, get some information. If you need one, you can call us at 866-DADS-LAW. Obviously, we're always around to help. We've got offices near you and around the country. So hopefully that was, um, albeit, uh, packed in with information about custody or child support and alimony. Hopefully that was helpful to you in this uh, in a very difficult time and dealing with COVID-19 and coronavirus. So stay tuned for the next one. It will be coming up and uh, we'll continue this series and how uh, COVID is uh, impacting guys and custody and divorce in general. And we'll continue to bring you more and more information and some tools and tips to try to keep you up to date and uh, with enough information to take action. So again, until next time, uh, have a good time with uh, dealing with what you're dealing with and we'll be thinking about it. And uh, stay tuned to dadsdivorce.com, cordellandcordell.com, and we'll continue to provide you with information. Thank you for listening to the Men's Divorce Podcast presented by Cordell & Cordell. To schedule your appointment with a Cordell & Cordell attorney, please visit CordellCordell.com or call us at 1-866-DADS-LAW. Also make sure to visit our partner websites, mensdivorce.com and dadsdivorce.com and download our free Men's Divorce Source app available on the App Store for the latest divorce news and resources. Cordell & Cordell a partner men can count on.